Welcome to a slide presentation by Dental Assisting LC for the Dental Assisting student. Today's topic we're going to look at is radiographic interpretation of dental anatomy. And basically we're going to be looking at some radiographs to determine what am I seeing and what is normal. Before we start, let's look at some dental terminology for dental anatomy and radiography. For the dental anatomy, I'm going to be very general, so hopefully you will take some time to review all the standard terms for the areas of the skull, uh, the dental arches, and the teeth, and the teeth meaning the tooth structures. Some of the terminology for dental radiology, or I should say a couple of terms, is what we actually see on an x-ray image besides the dental anatomy. We need to recognize that dental anatomy, or in another slide presentation you'll see some dental materials, um, are either radiolucent or radiopaque. Radiolucent structures um, actually lack density and so therefore when the x-rays penetrate the image they pass through with little resistance and so those structures look very uh, they look dark compared to other structures or very much in the dark gray tones if a structure or a material is radiopaque that means that it was a more dense structure so that there was some resistance to the passage of the x-rays themselves and so therefore the image appears on a radiograph as a bright white image. Let's take a look at some dental anatomy on some radiographic images. So the first one we have is a cephalometric image. And you can see here that it is an image of the skull, the cranium, and the facial structures. And we don't have a lot of detail on a cephalometric image of the cranial bones, but we do have pretty good detail of the facial bones. Um, using this diagram just as something that you may have used in your dental assisting programs. Um, it's a very old diagram and uh, to help with identifying the bones of the skull. And so we can see that on a cephalometric image. And it's important for a dental assistant who is taking these images to when they see their results to know that they have a diagnostic quality image for the dentist or the orthodontist. One of the applications for a cephalometric image uh, would be a orthodontic tracing. Um, so these days, of course, we're using technology and scanning the extraoral, intraoral uh, structures for these types of tracings. Uh, and tracings are used for an orthodontist or a general dentist practicing orthodontics uh, to develop a treatment plan for the patient, and it can project the growth. A panoramic image, very common in dental practices. So what am I seeing and what's normal? We have a lot of anatomy that we can interpret on a panoramic image. We have uh, the sinuses, um, the sinus areas that you can see are radiolucent. Uh, the mandibular canal, the canal itself is radiolucent. That actually is a little high there. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can move that. There we go. That's the mandibular canal. Uh, the mental foramens. So we usually have them on both sides, left and right. Uh, that is radiolucent. Uh, border of the mandible. So you can see the mandible, for the most part, the alveolar process, the bone, uh, is considered radiopaque. And so we have the border of the mandible, the ramus, uh, the TMJ, uh, the condyloid uh, process, coronoid process, the glenoid fossa of the um, um, uh, bone, the cranial bone here. And so there's a lot that can be interpreted. And it's important for us to recognize 
what is normal. So again, we can be confident that we have a diagnostic quality image. If we have a panoramic image um, that looks like these, uh, then we know, my goodness, something happened here. I think it's pretty obvious that the patient was not asked to remove their earrings or glasses. And I just picked these up from the internet, so they're not my images. Uh, but we do want to make sure that we're going to start out with some good technique in order to get a quality image. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you want to make sure that you have your patients remove their jewelry. Um, these days, you know, people have multiple piercings. Uh, facial piercings should be removed as well as intraoral piercings. Another um, area of interpreting a radiograph for diagnostic quality uh, has to do with positioning. So what's normal here? Well, a lot of the structures are normal, but you can see that this patient was positioned in the panoramic uh, machine uh, with a very, uh, the chin was probably tilted up too much. And so you get this very broad look, which actually causes the sinuses to not be very clear and you get a reflection here that's kind of a whited out area of the anterior teeth. So positioning is very important and it would be up to us if you didn't notice your positioning that when you see your radiograph you can interpret that oh this doesn't look very good and unfortunately would have to retake. Let's look at some periapical and bite wings to interpret tooth anatomy and other structures. So what am I seeing here? Well, there's a lot of numbers here. And part of this for the online class that I teach um, at my college uh, is going to be part of a quiz. So I'm not going to give the answers. Uh, the answers are really, uh, you can look up uh, probably on the internet. You can probably find them in any dental assisting textbook. Uh, but some of them I, I hope are going to be a reminder, just a review for you. So we have the crown, the root of the tooth, the pulp chamber, the pulpal canal, furcation, the apex, the mental foramen, we're going on and on with crown, um, anatomical root structure, alveolar process. You've had this before, number 11. Here is another uh, similar to um, number six. Uh, this should be an area that's very familiar to you. And so we're going to just, I'm going to leave it at that. Maybe you want to stop the video and give yourself a little quiz here. <clears throat> and my students, you will have the answers. Now let's look at radiolucent and radiopaque anatomical structures. I have been talking about this during some of the other slides here. Uh, but it's really important to be able to recognize these structures so that you know, once again, I'm always saying this, that you have a diagnostic quality image. So we know that the sinuses are going to be radiolucent. Uh, the mandibular canal is radiolucent. Alveolar process is radiopaque. Um, and uh, those are some of the basic structures. Also here we see some metal uh, restorations, some crowns, probably an amalgam, so those are radiopaque. Um, use going to use this bite wing image for um, differentiation between radiolucent and radiopaque. So reviewing your anatomical tooth structure, we have the pulp and the pulp chambers, which are radiolucent. We have the alveolar process, which is radiopaque. And yes, you see a little of the trabecula here that um, has some radiolucency, but the general consensus in dental anatomy is that alveolar process, bone is radiopaque. Um, then we have our tooth structure, 
the enamel and the dentin that are radiopaque. So we're coming to the end of this presentation and I always like to do a little review about what are the applications for radiographic interpretation for dental assistance. Why do we need to know this? We need to be able to recognize the normal anatomy from deviations or anomalies so that we can be confident that we are obtaining diagnostic quality images. It could also help us with our radiography techniques that maybe we need to change some positioning, uh, whether that be positioning of the patient or PID positioning. And if you're still using traditional film uh, for radiographic images, uh, it would definitely help in mounting films if you are knowledgeable in radiographic interpretation. I thank you so much for listening and I hope you are learning from these videos in radiography and there are some other videos so check out the Dental Assisting LC channel. Thank you.